Good morning, Pi Cascades. Good morning. I'm Nina Zakarenko. I've been a software engineer for over a decade now. I've written code for a few companies that you might have heard of. I've worked at HBO, Meetup, Reddit. Today, I work as a senior cloud developer advocate at Microsoft, where my goal is to make Azure a pleasure to use for Python developers everywhere. The slides and code are available online, so grab a copy if you want to follow along. There are a lot of links and helpful resources available. Um, if you grab them on speaker deck, just know that you have to download the PDF for those clickable links. And uh, there's code available as well, git.io slash tech talks. Let's try something a little bit fun in this talk. If you're learning something new that you're excited about, uh, please share a tweet. You can use the hashtag PyCascades2019. You can at mention me as well. I'm NNJA on Twitter, like Ninja, but without the I. If you see anything, um, yeah, if you see anything exciting, share. So let's dive in. Uh, I want to cover where to start when you're just getting started. So what kind of different hardware options you might have, um, programming LEDs, how you might debug your hardware with print statements, the kind of tools that you might use, and libraries, and lastly, what kind of projects. And if I can get it working, I also have uh, some live demos to show. I brought this uh, kind of portable camera set up for the very first time, so we'll see if uh, the demo gods will shine on me today. <laughs> okay, so um, I've been doing software for a long time. I only recently started playing with hardware. These are some of my projects, um, and I, I kind of instantly fell in love. I feel like software has this ephemeral nature to it, and you, you can't hold it in your hand, you can't touch it, and, and hardware is a little bit different. You can kind of create a physical manifestation, manifestation of your code. Um, I, and so I love the idea of LEDs. I really liked making kind of cool wearable projects. I made this headdress. Um, I wanted to make pretty things that fit my aesthetic, which got me interested. Hardware lets me be creative. It lets me imagine something and then bring that imagination to life. And I've been inspired by a lot of amazing shared projects and documentation from other makers, uh, people like Becky Stern and many others. So your hardware options. There are, are quite a few. I'm only going to cover three briefly. The Raspberry Pi Zero W. Um, it's a small development kit. It has a wireless and Bluetooth connectivity. And let me, let me breeze through these, and I'll show you a picture instead. So here we go. On the left, that's the Raspberry Pi Zero W. It's got uh, wireless connectivity, Bluetooth. Uh, this is the range of devices, or, or some of the devices that run Python. In the middle is the BBC Microbit. This, it's a computing device aimed at learning, and it was given free to every child around the age of 11 across the UK in 2016. Adafruit has a lot of devices in the M0 and M4 lines. Um, and there are many more that I'm not going to be covering today. What I will be focusing on is Adafruit. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, so this is not a sales pitch. I'm just a huge fan, and uh, it's a woman-owned company based in New York. Adafruit uh, products are low cost, they're easy to order, and they're also very well documented. This is uh, kind of maybe my favorite uh, Adafruit thing. It's the Hollowing M0. It's a spooky development kit. And it has a 1.5 inch screen on it. <laughs> um, and I have one with me if anybody wants to take a look at this close up. So I'm not the only one who thinks that hardware is cool. 90% of students said that the micro bit showed them that anyone can code. 86% of students said that the micro bit made computer science more interesting. And uh, maybe a little close to heart for me is that 70% more girls said that they would choose computing as a school subject after using the micro bit. Now, uh, here's what we're going to be focusing on today. It's the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. Depending on where and where you purchased it, it may come with Python installed by default. Uh, if you picked up one in the uh, Microsoft booth at PyCon US last year that, that does have Python installed, but if yours doesn't, it's pretty easy to set up, set it up to run Python. And I'll show you how. It's my favorite option for an introduction to electronics and programming hardware. So um, PEP 206 says, 
that the Python source distribution, uh, it's maintained this philosophy of batteries included. So having a rich and versatile standard library which is immediately available without making the user download separate packages. It helped drive, drive Python's success early on. Now, the CircuitPython Express doesn't actually come with batteries. <laughs> but I imagine that the same philosophy applies here. It has everything that you need to get started programming hardware, uh, just included on one board. So here it is, uh, what's on it? There's 10 NeoPixel RGB LEDs. They, they're kind of on that ring uh, around the outside. Each one can display 16 million colors. There's a light sensor, a temperature sensor. There's programmable buttons, a left and right one and a switch. There is an accelerometer to detect motion, a mini speaker, a microphone. It has input and output via the pads around the sides and some of those support capacitive touch. Um, there's two megabytes of flash memory, so your programs are saved even if it's not connected to a power source. You can store s small files there like sound clips, and there's micro USB on it, which makes it easy to program. And lots of other stuff. The best thing about it is there's no soldering required. You can easily connect other things to it if you want to with alligator clips like LED strips once you're kind of ready to explore more. Now, there's two variants of Python that run on hardware. There's MicroPython. It's a variant of Python 3 that's designed to run on microcontrollers, and it's really compact. So it's compact enough to fit and run within just 256K of code space and 16K of RAM. It's what runs on the micro bit. There's also CircuitPython. CircuitPython is an education-friendly fork, uh, Adafruit fork of MicroPython. And um, both are open source. But since I'll be showing my demos on Adafruit hardware, we'll be using CircuitPython. There are a few different CircuitPython libraries available for programming LEDs, um, interacting with sensors, et cetera. Some of them are built in, some are not, and you'll need to move them into a lib folder um, on your device. We're particularly interested in the one for the Circuit Playground Express that lets us interact easily with the board. And let's see um, how that might look. So here's an example. There's the two, the two buttons. You can kind of see they're labeled A and B. We can access this once we import the Circuit Playground library, CPX. We can access them with uh, CPX dot button underscore A and button underscore B. Those variables will be set to true when the button is pressed and false when it's not. Now, you need to understand a little bit about RGB LEDs to um, really get a good idea of how they can be programmed. So an RGB LED is just a collection of three LEDs in one package. RGB stands for red, green, and blue. And if you look at the color wheel on the right side, you can see that you can produce almost any color by combining these colors in intensities varying from zero to 255. So zero would be 0% zero intensity, 255 would be 100% intensity. Zero means that the color is not present, but 255, if we set blue to 255, for example, that would show all blue. I think it works a little bit better if you can see it. So NeoPixel is an Adafruit brand uh, for individually addressable RGB LEDs, commonly uh, the w WS2812. The tiny LEDs within the NeoPixel, they're lighting up individually, but your eye sees them as one color because they're Pretty small, right? So if they're all turned on, and you can, you can kind of see uh, the color around the outside of the ring. If they're all turned on, the LED will display white. If they're all turned off, the LED will display black. And based on how they're um, programmed to turn on, they can display all the colors in between. So here's a simple program that cycles through red, green, and blue LEDs with a button press. Let's walk through it. So the first thing that we're doing is importing um, just time from Python and also CPX, the, the Circuit Playground Express library. We're setting up our colors with RGB, RGB values. Now, notice where the zeros and 255s are here. For example, for red, just 255 in the first position, zero for the rest, et cetera. I'm making a list of all the colors that I want to loop through, and I'm starting with a position of zero. 
I'm also setting the brightness uh, here because the LEDs are very bright. So if you use this code, I don't want to blind you. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I want to, instead of just running our code once and then stopping, we want to loop forever because we want to be constantly checking for input. I constantly want to know, um, I constantly want to be checking if either of the buttons are being pressed. Now, I can use that uh, cpx.button A or cpx.button B to listen to button presses. So if either, um, e if either the left or the right button is pressed, change the, uh, pick, pick the new color. Uh, I'm, I'm using modulo here to kind of wrap around the list, right? So we just start back at the beginning if we run off the end. And I'm sleeping for just a fifth of a second because that helps prevent picking up multiple button presses. Um, in other types of hardware, this idea is called debouncing. Okay, actually, I'm going to go back here, and let's see if um, can everyone see that? Is that big enough? Okay, so I just have that here. Let's see. So all the red LEDs, uh, you see the two buttons here. If I press either of them, it changes color. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Um, all right, well, let's try to add a little bit of code to this. Um, hmm. I'm not mirroring my displays, so I'm just going to have to bump this up really big. So. That. We have our RGB here. Let's add some new colors, so purple. Purple is a combination of red and blue, right? So that would be 255 for red, zero for uh, green, 255 for blue, and yellow is um, green and blue, right? So that would be uh, zero for red, 255 for green, 255 for blue. And uh, let's do one more. Let's do a cyan. So cyan is uh, green and blue, right? So, oh, did I mess up my yellow? Okay, so yellow is my cyan, right? <laughs> um, and we're doing uh, green and blue, right? Red and, red and green, thank you so much. So that would look like that. And now I have uh, some new colors. Yeah, got that. So that's my yellow. And now let's add these to my list here. We got purple and we got yellow. And I'm gonna save it and let's see if this works. So now I have my Red, green, blue, and there's my cyan, and there's my purple, and there's my yellow. Cool, so it, it works. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Get that out of the way. And then I had a, I had a video just in case it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, so how do we program this thing? Um, it's a lot easier than working with Arduino-based platforms. For those of you in the room who have tried it, um, that means no AVR dude errors. Those <laughs> yeah, there's, a few, <laughs> there's a few knowing laughs. Um, <laughs> uh, so, you, you plug it in with, um, with data and charge on the USB cable. Uh, if you see a circuit Python drive, great, you're, you're kind of done there. On, on Mac, it'll be in volumes uh, slash circuit PY. Otherwise, you need to go and install circuit Python. Next, you edit your code and save it, either in a code.py file or a main.py file, and then your code will run instantly because it's being auto-reloaded. 
just know that you don't want to unplug or reset the board before your computer finishes writing the file to the board because that can corrupt the drive. Uh, you want to wait until the file is done being saved before unplugging or resetting your board. That can take about 30 to 90 seconds, depending on your editor. Um, so I just made a, a quick little video of how you might, uh, if you don't have CircuitPython already, this is how you would install it. You grab the, uh, I believe it's a UTF file from the Adafruit website, and uh, you need to uh, double press on the on the reset button, the tiny kind of, I'll show that again, the tiny reset button in the middle of the board until it's green. That means it's kind of ready for input. And then you can just drag and drop uh, that file and uh, into the CPlay boot uh, drive that will show up. And then circuit, it'll turn off for a second and CircuitPython will be ready to go. Now, what editor can you use to write the code? The safest bet is um, an editor that writes out the file completely when you save it. So it does the smart thing. It writes out the full file. You don't have to worry about waiting to save. Um, I love VS Code for this. It's already the editor that I use for Python. It has great autocomplete, an integrated terminal, and a lot more. There's also the Mu editor. It's a simple Python editor designed for beginner programmers, and it has awesome support for the Circuit Playground Express. All you have to do is click on mode in the top left over there. It's cross-platform, and it takes a lot of the, the pain out of configuration. Uh, something that I'm super excited about is a brand new guide as of February 2019 for how to use EduBlocks with the Circuit Playground Express. How many of you know about EduBlocks? Yeah, that's awesome. So for those of you who don't, it's created by Joshua Lowe, who's just a brilliant 14-year-old programmer. He did a talk at EuroPython last year about um, a little bit about himself and mostly about EduBlock. So I recommend that you watch it. He's so inspiring. EduBlocks is a scratch-like drag and drop interface to Python. Um, but there's Python 3 under the hood, so you can view your code visually or you can view it in a tab that just has all the Python code laid out, um, which is awesome, right? You can switch between the code and the blocks, so it kind of helps you learn, but then it also helps you graduate. And the integration with the Circuit Playground Express is still in beta, so make sure that you try that out. Okay, now what if something's going wrong? It's going to be helpful to see what's going on with print statements. Here, I updated my program to add some labels to my colors because I want to keep track of the previous colors and the next colors. So I'm just adding those labels. Next, I'm looping forever again, and I'm just grabbing the name and the color, you know, the label and the color from my uh, data structure there, listening for data press, but uh, button press. But the most important thing here is I have a print statement now. And, um, you know, printing out what color I went from to the color I'm going to. The important thing here is you need to view these print statements and errors via the serial console. You need to communicate with the Circuit Playground Express to see those print statements. The serial console receives output from your Circuit Python board sent over USB, and then it takes it and displays it so you can see it. If you don't connect to a serial console, you're actually not going to see anything. You won't see any output. This is really helpful for troubleshooting errors because your board will send errors and then the serial console will, will print those too. The easiest way to do this um, is with the Mu editor. Once you pick the mode of Circuit Python, all you need to do is click on the serial button in the toolbar and that's it. So if you're, if you're kind of unsure, this is the guaranteed way to go. And just a quick demo of that. Um, that once, you know, as I press the button, we'll see that in the serial. For the advanced serial console on Mac OS, you can use a terminal app and a screen program or, um, or uh, plenty of other kind of standalone apps to connect to the serial console, like cool term. I, um, all you have to do is uh, list your devices and then connect to that uh, serial console with screen. In the example here, um, 115. To zero, 00, that's the baud rate. I like using VS Code, the integrated terminal for this. And you could kind of see a demo of that here. Actually, should, should we 
Try this, see if it works. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back. All right, let me just um, switch out my devices because I have the updated code on the second one. Okay, so this is my updated code here. We'll see that there's a print statement and I'll open up my integrated terminal. And uh, let's see, I want to list out my devices. And we'll see here I have uh, the USB modem. That's the one that I'm interested in. Excuse my typos, I'm like trying to figure out what's going on from this other tiny screen. Um, okay, so now that we have that, we can connect to it. Check out the full string. Oh no. Oh, thank you. I love pair programming with a room full of people. <laughs> All right. See, that looks like it's working. Um, I also have a handy guide to quitting screen for those of you who might need it. Um, <laughs> All right, so how do you power your projects? Um, USB is probably the easiest option. You probably already have a micro USB cable somewhere in your house and like a, a phone charging battery. Um, you can even plug it into the wall or plenty of other things. For battery packs, uh, they have to have a GST connector and you need a minimum of 3.5 volts DC to um, power the Circuit Playground Express. So you can, uh, each AAA household battery is one and a half volts, so if you put three of them together in the right enclosure with the right connector, that's a, a great option for uh, powering your projects on the go. You can also power your projects with uh, LiPo batteries. So just a fair warning, uh, they're for advanced users only. They're small, lightweight, but they're very energy dense. They, they have a lot of energy in a small package, but they're for advanced users only because they're very fragile. Um, they can be dangerous if they short or are damaged. They need a lot of special care. Uh, the Circuit Playground Express, um, so they, they can't be heated, punctured, or bent. It's so not for kids without supervision. And the Circuit Playground Express does not come with the charging circuitry for these light poly batteries. Uh, so you'll need to buy your own charger. So putting it all together, there's Adafruit demo code. Uh, I posted the code that came with my Circuit Playground Express that did have Python on it. Uh, there's an initial directory link there as well that has all the library files. The demo covers the majority of the features and it prints out sensor readings, et cetera. Um, it might be a little bit out of date, but there's even a flag set so you can turn on the Playground Express and turn it into a little piano using the capacitive touch pads. Um, and I brought that with me, so. So if you can kind of see that, um, I set it so when I switch it on. Can you hear that? Yeah, okay. I, I didn't write this code, this is all Adafruit, but it's there and available for you um, if you want to check it out. So just a few other quick um, housekeeping things. Uh, Microsoft Make Code is a great option. Coding is not required. So if you want to start programming hardware with zero programming knowledge or zero coding, uh, Microsoft Make Code is a block-based editor here. You can export as JavaScript. 
you can have cool collaborations. There, there's uh, one with Cartoon Network. One of the projects is making a glowing gem from Steven Universe, which is, I love that show. Um, <laughs> and you don't even need a device. There's kind of an emulator right there on the left-hand side so you can see what's happening. And the hardware community is really awesome about sharing projects, incredible projects with just step-by-step -step instructions. So there's Adafruit guides, there's Microsoft Make Code, Instructables is also a great resource. Um, on the left here, there's a jack-o'-lantern project with the Circuit Playground Express. All you need is the board, some batteries, and a Ziploc bag if you're going to be using a real pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a link to that up there. So, okay, next steps. Buy or borrow a device of your choice, um, or use an emulator. Pick your editor, like Visual Studio Code, Mew, et cetera. Um, write your own code, use the library, start with someone else's project. The choice is yours. Uh, you'll get started with Python on hardware in no time. And I, I, brought, um, I brought one of my projects. <laughs> so um, I think you see now that Python opens a whole new world of working with wearable electronics uh, because my, my earrings run Python. <laughs> Um, and uh, Scott is here today. He's the maintainer on CircuitPython. Find him. He's got a lot of cool stuff. If you'll be at PyCon US in May, stop by the Microsoft booth. We'll be giving away more Adafruit kits for uh, completing coding labs. And as a special surprise, uh, Adafruit will be including a Circuit Playground Express in your PyCon US swag bag. All right, that's it. Um, thank you so much for having me today. I hope you're going to leave inspired. Uh, if you want to take a closer look at hardware, I have some with me. If you want to learn more about Python at Microsoft, the link is up there. Uh, follow me at Twitter on Twitter. Check out the code. And that's the mascot for uh, my team, Developer Advocate Bit. So if you think that's cute, find me in the afternoon for stickers. Thank you.